The Iranian government has ordered its armed forces to be prepared for war with Israel. At the same time, Tehran is attempting to avoid direct confrontation, even at the cost of dismantling affiliated groups in Lebanon and Gaza, reports the New York Times. Four Iranian officials told the New York Times that Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei ordered the country's armed forces to develop multiple contingency plans in response to expected Israeli military retaliation. They warned that Iran would strike back if its territory suffered significant damage or casualties. However, Tehran might refrain from responding if Israel only targets a limited number of military sites and weapons depots. Officials, two of whom are members of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, stressed that Iran would certainly retaliate if Israel hits oil facilities, nuclear installations or high-ranking officials. They did not rule out the possibility of an attack using up to 1,000 ballistic missiles or disrupting energy supplies in the region. According to the report, in recent weeks, Iran has been working to strengthen alliances with regional Arab countries but has also warned them that any assistance to Israel during an attack would make them a legitimate target. Nasser Imani, a political analyst close to the government, told the New York Times that Iran does not seek a major war with Israel, saying, We don't see any benefits in the region exploding. He added that at this stage, Iran does not view war with Israel as a threat to its existence. However, he believes that a prolonged conflict would be devastating and could derail the new government's efforts to negotiate with the West in hopes of lifting harsh U.S. sanctions and improving the dire state of Iran's economy. Two Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps members told the New York Times that senior generals who had not commanded battalions in Iraq and Syria and are now fighting Islamic State militants have been deployed to all border provinces. There is concern that armed ethnic separatist groups and militants, such as ISIS, could launch attacks and provoke unrest if Iran enters the war. In recent months, tensions in the Middle East have significantly escalated. Since the Hamas terrorist invasion of Israel from Gaza in October 2023, Iranian-backed Islamic militant groups Lebanon's Hezbollah and Yemen's Houthis have launched regular attacks on Israeli territory. By early autumn, the intensity of the strikes and confrontations reached their peak. On October the 1st, the Israeli army initiated a ground operation in southern Lebanon to push militants away from the northern border and stop rocket and drone attacks. Additionally, in recent months, Israeli intelligence has eliminated several leaders of Islamic militant groups. At the end of July in Tehran, IRGC leader Ismail Ghania was assassinated. The residence where he was staying was rigged with explosives and detonated by Iranian security forces at the request of Mossad. On September the 27th, Israel carried out a strike in Beirut, killing Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah. In response, on the night of October the 2nd, Iran launched its most extensive attack, firing around 180 missiles at Israel. Israel has vowed to retaliate and has already scheduled the timing of its counter-strike. A reprisal may occur as soon as before the US presidential election on November the 5th. A South Korean intelligence report says that North Korea has shipped about 20,000 containers to Russia via the northeastern port city of Rajan. When fully loaded, they can hold about 9.4 million 152mm shells. It is noted that while North Korea's shipment of 152mm artillery shells and missiles to Russia has not had a significant impact on its stockpiles, the additional shipments could hamper military preparations due to a shortage of ammunition. North Korea's weapons stockpiles could last for three months of war. Pyongyang is also operating approximately 200 munitions factories at maximum capacity and has secured enough military supplies for a three-month war with South Korea despite the increased exports, Seoul's Defense Intelligence Agency said. We assess that North Korea has exported more than 20,000 containers to Russia through Rajan port, according to a document that the Seoul's Defense Intelligence Agency submitted to People Power Party Representative Kong Day-6 office and seen by NK News. 
The new figure marks an increase of some 7,000 containers from when DAA last estimated the extent of DPRK Russia arms trade in August, with the agency calculating that they could have carried approximately 9.4 million rounds of ammunition. Similar to August's assessment, the Seoul's Defense Intelligence Agency said North Korea may be providing 122mm multiple rocket launcher shells, T-series tank shells, portable anti-aircraft missiles and anti-tank missiles compatible with Russian systems, stating that the US and the ROK are jointly tracking North Korean weapons use on the battlefield. The updated estimate comes days after South Korea revealed evidence of North Korea deploying troops to assist Russia in the war in Ukraine. Shin Sung Ki, a senior analyst at the Korea Institute for Defense Analyses told NK News that the DIA assessment seems accurate given how North Korea has focused on building factories that produce shells and missiles that Moscow needs in recent months.